warning, this video contains opinions, some of which you may not agree with. Please do not watch this video if your response to encountering points of view, which you do not personally hold, is to start throwing the toys out of the pram, spitting your dummy out, hurling obscenities, or working yourself into a self-righteous stupor of indignation, or because someone on the internet has said something you find objectionable. If this is you, then please go to your safe space, have a lie down, and the nasty man will be gone soon. Thank you. Hello chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again. I do hope you're well. Now then, as you've probably noticed, just about everybody seems to be putting something up on YouTube these days about the current state of affairs at Gibson. In fact, I think even my dog has a video on this very topic planned sometime soon, so not wanting to be left out, I thought I'd give you my 10 bobs worth. As I'm sure you're aware, Gibson are facing possible bankruptcy because, frankly, they're not selling enough guitars in order to keep the company going and I began to wonder why this is the case. Now I don't know about you but my perception is that Gibson guitars have got really rather expensive in recent years. Perhaps this is just me being the old fart that I am. You know, in my day you could go out and drink 10 pints of best bitter, buy a fish and chip supper, catch the last bus home and still have change from half a crown. Perhaps it is that, but just in order to check, let's have a look at some numbers. Right, here's a price list for all of Gibson's guitars as they were in 1979. And as it's Les Paul's that we're interested in, let's have a look at that section. Here it is. In particular, it's the Les Paul standard we want to look at. And you can see, just about, despite the fact that it's kind of on the fold of the piece of paper, that a Les Paul standard would have cost you $799 if you were paying for it in dollars. But what if you were paying for it in pounds sterling? Well, the exchange rate in 1979 would have bought you $2.28 for every pound in your pocket, meaning that in the UK, a Gibson Les Paul would have cost somewhere in the region of £350, which kind of chimes with my recollections of prices I would see in music shops back then. Now then, in 1979, the UK average salary was in the region of £6,000 per annum, meaning that a Les Paul standard would have cost you somewhere in the region of 5.8% of your average annual earnings. Fast forward to 2018, and according to the Guitar Amp Keyboard Centre's website, a Gibson Les Paul standard will cost you £2,599. And in 2018, the average UK salary is £27,600 a year. Meaning that if you look at that as a percentage, a Gibson Les Paul now costs you 9.4% of your average annual earnings as opposed to 5.8% in 1979. So that's going up from just over 5% to just under 10%. That is, as near as damn it, a doubling in price in real terms. So those figures seem to suggest that Gibson have indeed done what a lot of people perceive that they've done, which is to hike their prices. But it's not quite as simple as that, because the exchange rate plays a massive part in the price that you pay for anything that's imported, like American guitars. Uh, if we had the same exchange rate now that we had back in the late 70s, then a Gibson Les Paul standard would cost roughly 5.6% of UK national average earnings, as opposed to 5.8% back in the late 70s. So it's actually gone down a little bit in price when you look at it that way. But here's the thing. 5.8% to 5.6%, that's well within any kind of margin of error, frankly. So we'll say that the prices relative to income have stayed the same. Can you think of any other consumer product which has stayed the same price relative to income other than a Gibson Les Paul Standard or Gibson Guitars? For instance, cars, clothes, technology, whatever everything has in real terms gone down in price since the back end of the 70s. I grew up for example in a fairly middle class household when I was a kid. Uh, you know both parents were working and we owned our own home. Holidays every year that kind of thing. 
we may have owned our own home but we didn't own our own TV set no that came from radio rentals why because owning a television set outright was just it was just a pipe dream you couldn't afford to buy a television they were so ridiculously expensive you got it from radio rentals or from Granada or one of the other rental places all of which have now gone out of business because televisions are pretty much disposable items nowadays like I said things have become cheaper in real terms but a Gibson Les Paul standard has remained stubbornly the same roughly five and a bit percent of UK national average income also Gibson have more competitors nowadays back in the 70s if the guitarist that you um, wanted to emulate or admired was playing a single cut mahogany set neck twin humbucker guitar it was going to be a Les Paul let's face it these days it could just as easily be a PRS or an ESP or any number of, of other brands the budget guitar manufacturers have also got their act together and you know, sometime in the early to mid 90s they decided I know let's stop making guitars out of plywood bubblegum and snot and we'll use the good stuff like mahogany and maple instead now obviously Gibson's response to this was to you know start making their own budget guitars and uh, putting them out as epiphones but the, the fact remains that Gibson have more competitors for their particular type of instruments nowadays than they had when they kind of ruled the roost um, the elephant in the room of course are the um, innovations that Gibson have uh, put on their guitars in recent years you know motorized tuning pegs I mean come on really I mean I get where they were coming from with that um, Gibson guitars if you've played them and, and owned them like I have you will know that they can be a little bit unstable when it comes to holding their tuning um, so Gibson decided right we won't sort out the brake angle over the nut we won't sort out the headstock shape uh, to make the, the string pull a little bit um, better and straighter no what we'll do is we'll put some electric motors on the tuning pegs because that will solve everything you know I mean just let's not get any further into all of the uh, recent um, things that Gibson have done that guitarists don't like but the fact remains is that if you have a couple of grand in your pocket or thereabouts and you walk into a guitar shop looking for a set neck mahogany twin humbucker single cut guitar if the Gibson doesn't do it for you then there are other ones there that you can choose from you don't have to kind of think well I want that style of guitar so it has to be a Gibson in the way that maybe perhaps you once used to and all of this I think are the reasons why Gibson is struggling at the moment um, will they continue well I think they will in some shape or form because as others have said before me the brand Gibson is just too valuable to die out if you know the company Gibson as it stands at the moment does go to the wall then somebody will buy up the brand and start making guitars um, with that name on the headstock in pretty short order I should imagine so you know that's my 10 bobs with it anyway as I said at the beginning of the video and that's it for today folks um, if you've enjoyed this video then please hit the subscribe button if not then don't <laughs> if you're on Teesside and you want some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition then get in touch with me via the details at the end of this video if you aren't on Teesside and you want some guitar tuition then give me a shout anyway because I also do lessons via Skype and here's the usual plug for the albums that I have out at the moment the Whiskey Made Me Do It and Handles for Forks, both of which are available on all major platforms and via my website, the link you'll see below. Right, that's it for now folks, I'll see you all again next time, bye for now.